morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome to service this morning. Welcome to our friends online. It is great to be here to worship God together. Uh, we welcome Bishop Peter, who I'll introduce in a moment. Thank you for being with us. Um, let's pray. We have, uh, I'm married to Virginia, we've been married for 25 years and 34 days, so yeah, that's what I thought, yeah, round, I think round of applause is due, is it not? Thank you, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we, we have five children, Matt who is at university in fifth year, studying law, uh, Tom who's in university in third year, studying music and French, Freya who's in university studying creative media, and they're all over in Perth. And we have two uh, at school, so Mim, who's in year 10, and Eddie, who's in year 8. So that's our family. Oh, we have two dogs. We have a purebred beagle called Stan and a Labrador, black Labrador, called Doug. There'll be an exam on this at the Yeah, there will be an exam, yeah, yeah. Um, so you've, you've come to us from Western Australia. Yep. Are you a Western Australian lad? Uh, no, that, that, that takes a long time to become a local in Western Australia, probably about as long as it does here. Uh, we, um, I grew up in Wollongong, uh, then moved to Sydney to study, and then after Virginia and I got married, we moved to um, Inverell, which is in northern New South Wales, to be minister there, and then after that we were in Western Australia for six years. Thank you. And a question without notice? What is one thing you want from the churches in central Queensland? What is the one thing you want from St Luke's as a church in this place? I want you to be more like Jesus. That's what I want from you. So that you're growing to be more like Jesus. Now, added to that, telling other people how to be more like Jesus as well. But our primary commitment is to be more like Jesus. And hopefully, as a result of gathering here, uh, we will be that little bit more like Jesus. Thank you. Pleasure. Let's uh, stand together and sing our first hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
God of all. I need to turn that down, Cole. God of all, you gave your only begotten son to take the form of a servant and to be obedient even to death on a cross. Give us the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, that sharing in his humility, we may come to be with him in his glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come to the kids' talk. Now, guys, we're doing something a little different. Would you like to see what I've got? Can you see anything different in the church today? What's different in the church today? There's a plant up there. That's right. Do you know what kind of plant that is? It's like a fern. That's right. It's a palm. It's a palm tree. Because today is Palm Sunday, the beginning of what we we call the Passion Week or Holy Week in the church. Because we're in the we're really in the lead up to Easter. We've been working up to Easter, haven't we? Yeah. What's a palm tree? Yeah. So a palm tree. Okay. So with a palm, okay, a palm font. It, it, can you see how it's got little fingers and stuff? So in what Bishop Peter is going to be talking to us about today is a time when Jesus was going into Jerusalem and he rode in on a donkey and all the people, lots and lots of people, so many people on the donkey, but only Jesus rode the donkey. All the people stood on the side of the road and they waved palm branches, palm branches. So what I'd like you to do, Matthew, could you put your hand here so I can trace around it? Thank you, perfect. That is a great palm leaf right there. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's right, it's a beautiful palm. And can I have your hand here, yeah. Jamie? Yeah? Thank you. Let's have a look at that. And Eli, I'm going to need your hand too. Have we got any adults that want to get down on the floor? Uh, your wusses. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Oh, Bishop Peter's up for a good job, Bishop Peter. Thank you. Charlotte's up. You could ride a donkey. That would be great to ride a donkey. So much fun riding donkeys. Where would you like it? Perfect. Thank you very much. The palms, what I found last night when I was cutting the palms down is that they go everywhere and it is so hard. Sorry, Bishop Peter. Ow. Ow. Lost a finger. Get that on. Cried out was a word, as, as Jesus was riding in, they said a funny, one of those funny church words that we use a lot, they said, Hosanna, and they all said it. Can you say Hosanna for me? Hosanna. Hosanna. Oh, meeting into it. One more time. Hosanna. Thank you very much. Because they were welcoming a king. They were welcoming a king. How, how would you welcome a king? What would you say if a king walked in? Uh, yeah. Woohoo! That would be a good response. Jesus did ride the donkey. So they were saying Hosanna and they were welcoming the king. If you will, if uh, have your teacher at school. Sun cream. Yeah, okay, on sun cream, very important. So how would you how do you welcome your teachers? I've got to put the teachers here, so don't tell me fibs. How do you welcome your teachers? Good morning. Good morning. Just, is it more like good morning? Yeah. 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 Um, so we don't really celebrate our teachers walking into the room, do we? No. no. What about a football team when they run onto the pitch? What do we do? doesn't matter what the code is. When our football team runs on the pitch, what happens? Everybody screams. Everybody screams. So how do you think... Yeah, Jesus did ride the donkey. So how do you think we should welcome Jesus? How do you think we should welcome Jesus? Should we... Morning. Or should we... Scream. We should scream, you betcha, we should. So that's what people were doing and they yelled out, Hosanna, which is one of those churchy words that we use. And it means save or save us. Save us. Why would you say that to Jesus? Save us. Why would we say that? Because, well, they thought that Jesus was going to overturn the Roman rule. I, yeah, okay. And, and he thought, they thought they, he, they were all going to be free from the Romans. But Jesus did more than that, didn't he? What, 
That's right, with the palm trees. They all waved, Hosanna. So, so tell me, what did Jesus do for us? He loves us. He loves us and he died to save us, not from the Romans, but so that we could have God in our lives now and forever. So he did more than just a little bit, didn't he? So what we do on Palm Sunday, which is really interesting, and I can't take any credit for this, last night when we were doing craft at home with palm crosses, Colin sent me to go and do other stuff. <laughs> so my craft is not that great. However, what we do is we give out palm cross. Okay. Why would we do that? Uh, a palm tree. To remember the palm trees? Yeah. Because Jesus came and died on the cross. And died on the cross. So this remembers the victory of Jesus on the cross. So I would like you guys, before I give you your kids' packs, I would like you guys to make sure everybody in the church has had one. I might, I might give that to Eli and Charlotte to do, do you think? And you guys could just go and make sure they do it right. Could you do that? And then I've got some kid packs, which I'll get Eli to come back and grab for everybody. Okay, so Jesus came to save us on the cross and we waved palm branches. So this keeps everybody at home to remember Jesus' victory on the cross at Easter. That's pretty cool, isn't it, that we do that? Because yeah. uh, he loves us. Because he loves us. Thank you, Matthew. All right, I'm going to pray for you and we're going to give out the palm crosses, okay? Lord and Heavenly Father, I thank you for the families that come to our church at St. Luke's. I thank you for the families who watch online. Lord, everybody who takes a cross today, let it speak to them powerfully throughout the year. Let it remind them of your victory on the cross, that you came to save us, not from what's happening today only, but what will happen to us eternally. Lord, we thank you that through you, we share the victory of the cross and have eternal life in your name. In the name of Christ, amen. Okay, can you guys give those out, please? I'm going to stick this up. Can you go and give those out? You might like to give one to Bishop Peter, do you think? You going to go and give them out? Good kids. And whilst those are going out, I'll call our readers up, please. first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 9, in the Pure Bible, that is on page 732. The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue, to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting because the Sovereign Lord helps me. I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the Sovereign Lord who helps me, who will condemn me. They will all wear it out like a garment. The moths will, be, will eat them up for the word of the Lord.
John chapter 12, starting at verse 12. The next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, Praise God! Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel! Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it. He said, Do not be afraid of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand at the time that this was the fulfilment of prophecy. But after Jesus entered into his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. That was the reason so many went out to see him, because they had heard about his, this miraculous sign. Then the Pharisees said to each other, There's nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone out after him. Hear the word of the Lord. Friends, I thank you for the opportunity to uh, open up God's word for you. Um, why don't we pray? Just where you are, please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a communicating God and we pray that as your people we would hear your voice this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you'd like to have your um, pew Bibles open, it's on page 1078, 1078. And I'll do my best to open up that text. It has been said that how you enter a room is critical. So what happens after your grand entrance can make or break you? The party, the exam, the church final. Deep breath and you go in. You make your entrance and it's game on. So a grand entrance can be a big deal. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, it was his grand entrance and it was a big deal. It's so big a deal that every single gospel writer in the Bible has included it in their account. Deal his grand entrance. What's the big deal? Well, firstly, it's the, the arrival of God's king. And secondly, it has an impact on the king's subjects. His grand entrance requires a response. So it's a big deal because it's the arrival of God's king. And secondly, because it requires a response. So finally, it's showtime. Jesus has come to Jerusalem. He's come for the Passover. I take it you're familiar with what Passover is. Uh, far, Passover was the national festival to commemorate the rescue of the people of God from Egypt. Now, there's a, a, a gentleman by the name of Josephus who was writing in the first century, a Jewish historian. Get this. He reckoned that for Passover, there were 2.7 million visitors to Jerusalem. Now, take it or leave it, but that's, it was a big crowd. It was a big deal in the calendar. Now, Jesus and his disciples, they're coming in from Bethany, which is about 5 k's to the northeast of Jerusalem. That's the home of Mary and Martha, and Lazarus was with them, who was raised from the dead. Now, the Passover crowd, so we're at verse 12 now, if you're following in the text. So the next day after this, the great crowd, the Passover crowd, it hears that Jesus is coming. He's coming into town, a short walk away. There are ripples of excitement and anticipation and Jesus, the phenomenon. He's attracted crowds wherever, but this time, this time there's an added attraction and that's Lazarus who was raised from the dead. It's a sensation. Now, the Jewish rulers, they're uneasy about this. They already want to kill Jesus 
And now the verses 10 and 11 tell us they want to kill Lazarus as well. They're not happy about this uh, sort of ripple in the pond. They want to get rid of this tidal wave of public support. So verse 13. The crowds, they anticipate Jesus' arrival and they get palms like we have here and like was chillingly drawn by Jen. I think we'll all agree. So they've got palms. Now what's with the palms? Well, date palms grew everywhere. I'm told this is a town of palms and bougainvilliers. Thankfully, we don't have to get bougainvilliers. But palms were everywhere. So it was an easy matter for the crowds to get something to wave. But there's something a bit more going on. So in Revelation, at the end of the Bible, it talks about the great crowds and multitudes waving uh, palm, palm branches. But here, palm branches actually symbolise the Jewish nation. They became a national symbol in the two centuries leading up to Jesus. It's a bit like us waving a sprig of wattle. It's a bit like saying, we are Australian. Palm branches says, we are Israel. Now, it's a national symbol. Now, that's very dangerous because to Roman eyes, it looks like an uprising. So no wonder the Jewish leaders are very nervous, but it gets worse. The crowds are calling out, Hosanna. Now, as we've already found out in the kids' talk, sometimes I wonder whether we need to do sermons after a kids' talk, but anyway, I get paid to do it, so I'll do it. Hosanna means God saves or God will save. Give salvation now. It's, it's, it's a quotation, actually, from Psalm 118, which was sung in festivals. So any crowd saying that, what are they doing? They're saying, rescue us from our Roman occupiers. Be a blessing to the one coming on God's behalf to bring about this upheaval, the king, no less of Israel. So it looks as though we actually have an uprising on our hands right here and now. The chief priests and the Pharisees, they get it right. Right, there's trouble here. We've got to snuff this out right now. They get it right. Or do they? Verses 14 and 15. It changes the tone because Jesus finds a donkey, a colt. Now, the other Gospels, they indicate that there was a bit of background and prep for this. He organised it in an advance. Now, remember, Jesus was a local. He knew this area well. And he's, coming, he's been coming to Jerusalem for many years for the feast. But here, the king makes his grand entrance. Not on a war horse, but on a donkey, on a colt. That was the kings and rulers in He makes his grand entrance not on the war horse, not all aggressive like, but he dampens any nationalistic warmongering, any false expectations, and he uses the part of the Bible that emphasises peace, security and sacrifice. There's also a little hint from Isaiah, the servant song. It's like it, it's almost a, a message of comfort. You're going to be safe now. It's going to be okay. Daughter of Zion is used when he's talking about God's people who are under oppression. So Jesus is making a big statement. He's the king, of course. But he comes in peace. He comes to save. He comes to rescue. He comes to nurture. He doesn't come to conquer. He comes as the king to rescue and save, to bring about peace and safety. So this king, he's entered the capital and made a statement. It's a big deal. It's highly symbolic. The arrival of God's king is huge, but it's not a statement of conquest or aggression. It's the arrival of a peaceful, saving king. Those of you who are teachers, you know that when you enter a classroom, you send a message. Those of you who have had to deal with meetings, you know that when you walk into that room, you're, making a, you're sending a message. Those of you who are, are coaches of teams, you know that as you address the team and as you look at them, you're sending a message. It might be strident. It might be, I'm in charge. It might be, actually, things are OK, more comforting. Here, Jesus' entry, it makes a statement. It's laden with symbolism. He's saying, I'm not just visiting as a random to pick up a few religious trinkets. He's making a statement, the king is here. 
Three things for us. Jesus' entry as king, it is about authority. Quiet though it is, Jesus comes as a king, not just as a statement, but this is God's king. Now, if Jesus is in fact God's king, it means that he has God's authority. However we see Jesus, and I know it's complex, there's many bits to it, does your King Jesus have authority? Does your King Jesus have authority over you? Does your faith come with obedience, even when there are difficult parts of Jesus' teaching about forgiveness, about gentleness, about how we speak about others? Does your Jesus, does your King Jesus have authority? But also, Jesus' entry as king, it's not as a warrior conquest. He's gentle. He's come to rescue and to save, not to dominate. See, the flip side of Jesus having authority is, how does he use that authority? He doesn't dominate. He doesn't use aggression. He comes in peace. He saves and nurtures and brings security. This is the king that gives security. And it's worth remembering. Is Jesus your king? Does he give you security? Do you have the security to be more like Jesus, to be gentle in speech? Because God's king comes in peace. So he's made his grand entrance. It's a big deal. It's laden with symbolism. It's laden with significance. And he's coming into Jerusalem, God's king. Now there's another big deal that's about to happen as well. This is the response the response of people. We're going to look at verses 16 to 19 here. So if you've got your Bibles in front of you, verse 16. It's a bit monotonous, isn't it? The disciples, they never get it. And this is no exception. They didn't understand what was going on. They thought they were going to storm the capital. They already lined up their prestigious jobs with Jesus and his new government. And then this donkey comes along with Jesus. What's, what's going on? So the disciples, they don't get it. Yet they do once Jesus died and he rose. They start piecing the whole picture together because the suffering servant goes hand in hand with God's king. But at the moment, the disciples are clueless, which probably makes us feel better about ourselves from time to time as well. So verse 17, you've got the crowd. How did, they, how did they respond? Well, they're fired up. Well, for the moment, they knew what they saw a few days earlier. They saw a dead man who'd been in a tomb for three days who came out with bandages. That was Lazarus. You don't forget that in a hurry. And they're raving about it. They're, what does it say here in verse 17? The crowd was with him when he raised Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to spread the word. They're continuing to testify. I suspect they're not wrong that there's more than a touch of bandwagon going on here, a bit of crowd think. And the whole they are there because Jesus performed this miracle. But John, our writer, says this was a sign, something that points to Jesus' identity. And it raises the question then, if Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, who is Jesus? I mean, who is the only one who can give life? That would be God, wouldn't it? The crowds, though, they're still curious. There's excitement and wonder and amazement. The last verse we're going to be looking at is verse 19. I'll read it for us. So the Pharisees said to one another, as this whole thing unfolds, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world is going after him. That's the response of the Pharisees. They've sent out a death warrant on Jesus. They've now sent a death warrant out on Lazarus. They want this cut out immediately. The Jewish religious leadership, they're alarmed at what Jesus is doing. They're alarmed because he, firstly, he threatens the delicate balance between the Jewish people and the Romans who only just tolerate this crazy religion. But they're also worried, not just about the security of the Jewish people, but they're worried about their own position of power and influence. They're losing authority. They're getting nowhere. That's why they want Jesus killed, because great crowds are starting to follow Jesus. Now, from, they're going from them, and the whole world is coming to Jesus. They speak better than they know, don't they? Because Jesus is going to the world. But the Jewish leaders, they respond in hostility. So Jesus makes his grand entrance. He comes as God's king. 
And you got three responses. Confusion, excitement, but curiosity, and outright hostility. Just think about those three responses for a moment. If they were the responses to Jesus back then, I actually think they're pretty much the responses here. So I'm going to speak in just before I finish. I'm going to talk to three groups of people. The first group of people are like the disciples. You might be sitting here thinking, I'm still confused. I still don't get this faith stuff. It still doesn't make a lot of sense. If that's you, and I don't want to show of hands, but if that's you, check it out. Check it out. Jesus actually makes a lot of sense. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing now. I wasn't always a bishop. So if you're confused, check it out. That's the first set of people. The second set of people are like the crowds. It's a curious excitement. You know, church is fun. You know, you get to meet your friends. It's, it's kind of interesting. But happy to be an observer. Just watching. Now, if that's you, can I ask you a question? How will you grow and deepen your faith? Remember the one point that we need to make sure we're doing is we're being more like Jesus. How do you do that? Can I suggest it's doing what you're doing right now? Hearing God's word being explained. So that's reaction number two. Curiosity, but not real commitment. And to you I would say, what is your next step? Reaction number three is the Pharisees. That's abject hostility. Do anything to kill Jesus off. Just ignore him totally. Get rid of him. Now, if that's you this morning, well, it's great that you're in church. It's great you're in church. But can I say this? My question to you, if you're hostile to Jesus, is, well, what have you actually got to lose? What's there to lose? What power, what stubbornness are you protecting or cosseting? Because at the end of the day, God's king will win. Whether or not we like it, the king wins. So they're the three reactions we see in the passage. The king makes his grand entrance, which is a big deal. There are subjects they respond. They respond in confusion. They respond in excitement. And they respond in hostility. But there's one response that we haven't talked about, isn't there? What's that? Faith. Treating Jesus as your king. That's really the challenge. That is the best response to God's saviour king. with a question. Thank you for listening so attentively. But my question to you is this. Jesus the King, Jesus God's King, has made his entrance. How have you responded to King Jesus? Bluntly, is King Jesus Folks, I'm, going to just, I'm just going to pray for us. We'd like to bow your heads. Please. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus has announced who he is. He is your chosen one, the Christ, the King. Father, we pray that you would help us respond to the King appropriately. We pray that we are faithful, obedient servants. And we thank you that in Jesus we have salvation. We pray this in his name. Amen. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for, for bringing us God's word with and, and to challenge us to think deeper again. As we have been talking about work, walking towards the cross, to take that on board and think about what it is that we leave at the cross as we follow Jesus beyond the cross for the rest of the year. So let's stand together. And with the words of the Apostles' Creed, we're going to recommit our faith again today. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered in Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for a time of prayer as we come again to pray. I ask the question, what is happening in the world that we should be praying for? Nothing this week. Excellent. This is going to be short. Okay, your friend's name? Amanda. Thank you. Kerry, of course. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Big answer to prayer. And Stella? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. For Bishop Peter, what a nice thing to do. You're, you're going to get very So we have got, sorry, I forgot, um, Lauren, your friend's name again? Amanda. Amanda, thank you. No prayers for the COVID? Floods, Floods thank you. Floods, COVID, Floods, COVID. how about holidays? Mm. All right, let's, yay holidays, exactly. All right, let's pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has promised that you will hear us when we ask in faith. Receive the prayers we offer. Lord, you are indeed a good and gracious God, faithful in answering prayer. Lord, we once again come to you in awe and amazement as we thank you for answered prayer with Kerry this week and his health. We thank you that he has responded to your love. We thank you that you have answered that prayer and that they are on their way home now. But we thank you for your faithfulness with Stella. We thank you that she loves you and that you have lifted her once again and rallied her. That they will too know and love Jesus the way that Stella does. Mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, we thank you for her faithfulness to her family. And Lord, we pray that you'll continue her journey of health towards her 100th birthday. Answer, who's been in ICU. We pray that she will know you and glorify you. We thank you for all those who have prayed for these three wonderful people. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to show your hand in the lives of the faithful, that we will always sit in awe and wonder and bring gratitude for your work in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also thank you for the rain that has fallen around this region, that there are some places where dams are yet again full. Lord, we thank you for the small amounts of rain that fell in the catchment for this region. We ask, Lord, that you continue to send rain in this region to break the drought, to fill the dams, to bring hope and life to our farming communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness through all times. We bring before you today our brothers and sisters in New South Wales and southern Queensland where they once again have been hit by the torrents of nature. Lord, we know that your hand is a hand of love and we pray that they will know your love and compassion at this time, that they will feel your strength and your courage. Lord, we pray that the brothers and sisters of faith rise up to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this place, that through them, this dark time, 
your light will be known. We pray for the clean-up, for the families, for the communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, we do pray for uh, the situation that's unfolding in Brisbane with COVID-19. Lord, we thank you for our Premier, our Chief Health Officer, and for all who work tirelessly to keep us safe from this virus. Lord, we pray for the families of those impacted and for all those who have been close contacts in the last week. Lord, we ask that you have your hand upon them, that they have a heart and mind for their community, that they stay put until they're clear, Lord, that they will be sacrificial as you have been sacrificial. We pray that the community will be generous to them as you have been generous to us. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters right around the world in the grip of second and third waves, for the escalating COVID crisis in Papua New Guinea. Lord, we pray for the doctors and the nurses who have been working in capacity for such a long time. Give them your strength, Lord. Carry them through. We pray for patience and wisdom and courage of the medical teams. We pray for patience and, and graciousness on the behalf of families. Lord, this is a difficult time in our world. Draw us all closer to you this Easter. Let your cross be the place of hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your church here in Emerald and right around the world as we go towards the, the Easter resurrection. Lord, we pray that all eyes will be on you, that all hearts will be turned to you, that every Christian, every follower, every disciple will speak your name to their neighbours and loved ones and people on the street, that during this Easter, your love will be seen, your love will be felt, your glory will be pointed to. Lord, I pray that we all at this time seek your kingdom first, that your name be glorified. Lord, I pray that we take that out into the streets and the towns and the cities and the mountains. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, as our schools come to holiday time, we ask that you bless families. We ask that you keep them safe on the roads, that you help people to make good choices. That we pray for a time of rest and for us. We thank you for the way they serve students, serving the next generation. Lord, give them the rest they need that they can be a light in the dark world in the term to come. Give the kids also a rest that they need. Give them times of joy and exercise and fun so they can go to school year ahead. Lord, we thank you for our government, state, federal and local, for all who serve in this place. Lord, we pray that it will indeed be a place of integrity and truth. We pray for those who have been badly hurt in the halls of power. Lord, we pray for our leaders, that they will indeed stand firm for what is right in your eyes, that they will be strong in your love, and that your light will penetrate the darkness. Lord, as we come to Easter, we pray all these things in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God shows great love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's time for us to bring our heart before God as we prepare to come to his table.
And we say the words on the screen together. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have broken your holy laws and have left undone what ought to be done. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us and change us. By the power of your Spirit, Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you. Friends, hear the good news. God is slow to anger and full of compassion. He forgives all who humbly repent and trust in his Son as Saviour and Lord. God therefore forgives you in Christ Jesus, in whom there is no condemnation. Amen. Amen. Friends, we are the body of Christ. The, Spirit is with us. the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. COVID rules, please greet the people around you, but please don't wander around.
and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. The tree of defeat became a tree of victory. Where life was lost, their life has been restored. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the Living Christ. Now, gracious God, we give you thanks for these gifts of bread and wine, and pray that we who receive them in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, according to our Saviour's word, in remembrance of his suffering and death, may share in his body and blood.
Ivy and Lauren talked me into an extra song this week, so we're going to sing Hosanna. Please stand together and sing. There are too many good songs to choose. <laughs>